presentation I will uh, give today uh, will be about the major changes since the R11. So the slides you will see in the following uh, were put together by people from ANSYS, LST, Dynamo and some uh, from Arab. And my name is Tobias Erhardt and I will walk you through these uh, topics today and I hope uh, it will be not much more than one hour uh, for, for that. And it's not a comprehensive list of all new features, but uh, I think uh, 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 it's already quite a lot that we will see today. So before starting with the topics itself, let's take a look at the LS Dyna versions. Where, we, where are we now? So the version numbering scheme um, with LS Dyna, you probably know about that. The major branches are called R9, R10, and so on, and R12. And from time to time, we have these official releases uh, then called R93.1, R11.1, and so on. Um, the most popular release nowadays is uh, is the release R93.1. So it's m uh, used by most of the OEMs, let's say, or in the automotive sector, um, because it's a very stable uh, release and it, it already contains most of the features they need. So this is the recommended production version uh, at, uh, today. Uh, we have newer release versions such as the R10.2 from March 2019, uh, 2019 uh, release R11.1, and uh, as I said, the R931 is already also uh, one of the newer <laughs> versions. Even it's it's already one year now. And uh, today I will, as I said, talk about the R release R12.0 from June this year. So what will be the topics I will talk about? This is listed here. First of all, I will uh, show you some new features in the area of the occupant safety. So airbags and belts. And then uh, I will go through implicit contact, forming, additive manufacturing, thermal analysis, material models, isogeometric analysis, and some mis miscellaneous or general features and further topics will uh, briefly discussed uh, like the fatigue frequency domain and so on uh, icfd electromagnetics and so on uh, at the end of this presentation so let's start with occupants um, for occupant safety uh, important aspects here are for instance airbags and belts and what new features do we have in the R12 for that? Uh, the so-called CPM method, or uh, re the related keyword is the airbag particle, uh, has a new feature for push-out vents. And uh, the related keyword uh, for this special uh, uh, option is the define CPM vent. And uh, there is a new push-out vent option, IOPT equal 200 to treat uh, the internal material that is being pushed out through the vent. And you can define a part set there for the um, internal airbag part and uh, also a scale factor. And uh, I'm not an expert in this area, but I learned that you get a more realistic uh, behavior from uh, uh, airbag push out uh, through these vents. And uh, this is, uh, mainly that not not as much material is pushed out, so we have a less vent leak and higher pressures can be achieved with this uh, new option. And here you can see a schematic representation of uh, how this new feature works. I will not go into detail about that. Um, the next uh, on the next slide we have some more new features in the area of the CPM method. There's a new keyword called define CPM NP data. And this is to support more part specific input for airbag particle. So, um, and this can be invoked by uh, setting these parameters as shown here. Uh, further on, we have uh, uh, support for uh, the inflator mass flow rate curve. Um, 
where you can now not only use the define curve, but also define curve function and define function to implement your uh, behavior for, for the airbag. Um, and uh, here we have this discharge coefficient C23 can now be defined as a function of vent area. And finally, some uh, work was done uh, in the area of tire inflation because ANSYS um, uh, LST jointly developed some tire models together with the FCA group um, that is available um, that is available uh, on, on this uh, website here. And to uh, maintain the target tire pressure during the initial setup, some additional uh, tire inflation capability was implemented for this CPM method uh, in, in, uh, in this process of, of developing these tire models. Next important aspect in an occupant safety analysis is, for in, is seat belts. And here uh, we have some new features for the 2D seat belts. That means uh, modeling of seat belts with shell elements or membrane elements. And here uh, we have now also the possibility to define strain rate dependency. So we have a, a you can define a table, and uh, here you can see this uh, rate dependent behavior. Another. Uh, option is uh, the orthotropic material behavior that is now uh, available with the uh, 2d seat belt and for that you have new parameters uh, for input to control this orthotropic material behavior just here we can see the difference uh, depending on in which direction we would pull uh, such a material and uh, finally we have this uh, so-called coating functionality. This is about uh, the, the bending behavior because as I said, uh, this seatbelt 2D comes for comes with uh, the um, membrane elements in LS Dyna, but membrane elements do not have any bending stiffness. So to, uh, to have a more realistic behavior of your belts, uh, you can do that with these uh, parameters to add this coating kind of uh, functionality and that brings us to uh, for instance such an example where we would see some some bending here and uh, a different behavior depending on the thickness of the coating uh, defined in your input another uh, feature for seat belts is this new sensor type uh, shown here sbs type uh, 5 uh, this is uh, for retractor locking and the activation of pretensioners um, and it has now been extended to support the tracing of retractor pullout. So that means if we look at this example for instance, if you define a maximum pullout, so a length uh, of, the, of the pullout of the seat belt, at some point, uh, for instance at a maximum of 0 0.65 uh, pullout length, uh, this uh, sensor is triggered to lock the retractor and from this point on the re retractor force builds up as shown shown here. So this is another uh, new feature for seat belts. So let's go to implicit. Um, in implicit we have all the time uh, improvements uh, in, in the direction of for accuracy and robustness. So um, the uh, development group uh, works on in the area of contacts, elements, material tangents, and they are either added or improved. Uh, and, and this is uh, in, uh, in the way to have a regular maintenance to, to imp always improve the robustness of the implicit, the nonlinear implicit in, in LS Diner. And for instance, in this example, you can see that you could do things now that you would expect that this is an explicit simulation because of all this nonlinear buckling, uh, heavy contact, and and so on. But this is an implicit uh, simulation, uh, so this shows how uh, how robust and and, and how uh, how uh, 
the implicit non-layer solver can deal with really challenging applications. Um, the next is curve options. Um, if you uh, are interested in uh, in in even uh, define more flexibility to your implicit solution process, there is now uh, f first of all there is an option on control implicit auto that LS Dyna automatically generates key points um, mm. with this setting here. Uh, another new feature is for control implicit solution. Here, the I limit, maybe you know this uh, parameter, uh, the I limit can now be defined as a function of time, so it can change over time, which means you could go from BFGS to full Newton and back to BFGS or, or whatever. Um, so you're, uh, get, there's more flexibility for that now. Also more flexibility you can get for the convergence tolerances. They can also be defined as a f as functions of time. So perhaps your uh, nonlinear process is uh, very n highly nonlinear in, in, at some point of, of the process, but n not that much uh, later on or the other way around. And this can now be um, done with this new feature. Then, uh, if it comes to the treatment of boundary conditions, there we got some uh, pretty good enhancements for rigid body nodes. So, um, prescribed motion and constraints uh, are applied to rigid body nodes uh, in a way that you can uh, uh, get really accurate results there. And uh, reaction forces of rigid body and nodal rigid body constraints can be requested by this new option uh, on control output. And if you're interested in porting reaction forces uh, between simulations, so you're running a multi-step simulation process, then there is this new option BND out, Dyna in on, on boundary prescribed motion rigid, which allows you to um, deal with rigid bodies uh, very, very, uh, easily. Then uh, let's talk about rotations and time integration schemes. Here we uh, have a new time integration scheme uh, for arbitrary large rotational increments called finite rotational dynamics. I don't know if I have to move that here. Um, it is invoked by setting the, the alpha parameter on control implicit dynamics to a value less than minus one. And it's, uh, the, the method is a generalization of the rotational dynamics to nonlinear transient uh, uh, pro problems like this turbine, for instance, and so on. And you can see that the, um, that the, the this is a, uh, comparison of the different time integration schemes and the default new mark gets unstable already quite early here. This is the green curve and also the other two uh, blue uh, curves are the HHT and the BART method are going unstable at some point here as you can see and the new FRD is very robust and stable and, and, and smooth. So uh, if you're doing uh, having uh, doing problems like this, uh, you could uh, try this new feature uh, for your application. So that brings me to the next chapter about contact. And uh, here I will mainly talk about new developments for the mortar contact and for the soft equal to contact. So let's start with mortar. Um, Several new things uh, are available uh, for the motor contact uh, now. First of all, for uh, friction analysis or uh, analysis with uh, friction, the history variables in user friction can now be post-processed. And uh, also the frictional stress limit is, is supported. Is that going away here? Okay. Um, then uh, we have tight weld. This is also supported with the mortar now, which allows you to do general lamination modeling through the a user interface as well. And 
the mortar contact is also available in 2D. I think this is, uh, was already the case before the R12, but now there is an option to deal with uh, interfer interference contact. So that means if you have some uh, initial penetration, then uh, the LS Dyna uh, simulation automatically depenetrates uh, the uh, and 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 uh, also the so that that can be seen here. So we have this initial penetration, we have the depenetration, and some stresses are changing due to that process. So uh, this is also available now. Then also interesting is um, uh, eroding. In, in mortar contact. That means what happens if elements like thick shells or, or shells or solid elements are eroded during the, the analysis? What happens with the new exposed uh, segments? And uh, so with, uh, with the mortar contact, they are now automatically added to the contact. So these new exposed uh, segments, and that works for solids, shells, and thick shells. And for shell elements, uh, even the edges are uh, exposed uh, to the to the to the contact, and we can see that in in this movie here. Um, so, uh, okay, that's in the middle of that. So let's start here, and we can see elements eroding at some point, especially if okay. Now we get these cracks opening, and now if the uh, this is reversed again we can see that the that the new exposed segments are really working in contact self contact contact with the uh, penetration and so on so in in uh, in contrast to the regular uh, contacts in LS Dyna where you have to define that in addition uh, um, here it's just done automatically for the mortar and it's supported for the automatic surface to surface and a single surface. Also, we have new possibilities to get some more output from uh, from contact. If if you're running uh, with mortar, um, for instance, you can see the penetrations, the relative and the absolute penetrations now in the D3 plot, and that gives you a possibility to check your contact state, assess the quality, or maybe. Uh, get a better idea what what is going on, and this is invoked by the pan out parameter on control output, and you can see, for instance, here. Uh, so this is penetrations shown uh, in a roof crush uh, analysis, and also you could obs uh, observe the energy, the contact sliding energy, can also be monitored in a D3 plot uh, if you activate the ang out parameter on control output. So this is also shown for this roof crush example. Finally, uh, in, in mortar contact, uh, the, an eigenvalue analysis with uh, interference contact. Um, up to now, we, we uh, would have a problem. We, we had a problem there uh, if doing an eigenvalue analysis and we would have uh, interference in the contact initially, then we we saw some uh, effect on the on the on the eigen modes, so that we did not get uh, the the rigid body modes that we expected. So and and that is now uh, resolved. And so these are the first six eigen modes of this problem, and uh, the this is the first uh, deformation eigen mode uh, shown here on the on the top right. So this is more kind of a uh, correction of the code. Okay. So let's go to the soft equal to contact. This is the segment to segment contact, but it also, it's, it's not only segment to segment, but uh, you can also uh, have edge to edge contact. And, and for that, a new variable called edge K is now available on card C of, of star contact. And with that new parameter, you can scale uh, the edge-to-edge -edge contact stiffness 
um, for these uh, options, for these soft equal to and depth options, so they c that you can define a different context stiffness for the edge to edge contact compared to the segment to segment contact, which gives you more flexibility, more, and, and in the end, hopefully more re uh, realistic results. What other enhancements did we see uh, in the soft equal to contact? First of all, um, maybe you know that for spot welds, so if we have spot welds between uh, shell element parts, uh, then we have the possibility to reduce the contact thickness in the vicinity of the spot weld, and that was is available since a long time for tight uh, contact, but now it's also supported for uh, shared nodes with the shell, when, when the spot weld shares directly the nodes with the shell elements. Another thing is that you can now define different friction coefficients for the inner and outer surface of shell elements. So, like in this example, where we would have a pretty smooth uh, surface on the one side and a um, more rough surface on the other, you can now use this new keyword define friction scaling to deal with this situation. Then we have frictional torque correction uh, implemented in soft equal to. We have the orthotropic friction is now available uh, for that. And in the end, uh, finally, the MPP groupable contact is now also supported for soft equal to. So that brings us to the section about forming simulations. What new features do we have there in the R12? First of all, pretty interesting new uh, option is the in-core so-called in-core adaptivity. So this is all about a speed up because if you're doing adaptive mesh refinement uh, in your uh, forming simulations, then um, you had uh, always uh, the thing that the in each um, remeshing step. Uh, all the data was dumped to the hard drive and, and uh, then read, read in again and so on. And this is all uh, not uh, done uh, in, in, uh, in um, um, out of core, but in core now, which uh, speeds up the process uh, significantly. And uh, all this uh, can be activated by the new in memory flag on control adaptive and it's currently available uh, for mpp and shell h adaptivity so the typical uh, what you do in, in forming um, and here we can see just see a schematic representation of this out of core adaptivity and instead the in core adaptivity is much more uh, con uh, concentrated on on really the solution process and and not that much overhead is necessary anymore if we do everything in core. Um, here we can see an example where we have 150,000 cycles. It's a it's a springback, uh, or yeah, it's not probably not really a springback simulation, but it's uh, forming. Um, so uh, we have a lot of adaptive steps there and the number of shell elements increases from 8,000 to 1 million elements and we can see that with the new in-core uh, uh, method we get uh, save CPU savings around 30 to 70 percent so it's really uh, really a uh, step forward uh, for, for adapt adaptive mesh refinement in forming simulation. Another, another new feature is uh, the one-step method for carbon fiber reinforced composites. So the one-step method means that we inversely predict the initial blank size uh, or shape of, of a, a part uh, that has to be formed. And th that was already available for metal sheets and now it's also available uh, for carbon fiber reinforced composites. For that, we uh, model uh, the matrix with MAT24 or MAT37. The fibers are uh, uh, separately uh, taken care of. Um, fiber directions and normal stiffness 
is defined through this new keyword define fiber and uh, to account to better account for the effects of the embedded fibers the rotation of a local representative representative fiber within a generic element is is considered and you can see this in in a, an example so that would for instance be such an fiber reinforced composite even if i don't see that the matrix here that well but um here you can see the final 3D part and with a one-step method you would get this estimate for the initial blank. So this is a, a, a real part here and the, here we can see a comparison between the prediction, uh, the, the red curve and the experiment, the blue curve and yeah you don't see much difference and that is due to this new implementation uh, just presented. Next is uh, the, the mapping for solid elements. Um, we, we have the, the mapping for shell elements a long time in LSDINA and the keyword for that was include stem part and now we have an additional solid to solid option to, uh, where, where you can where LSDINA automatically maps stresses and strains, history variables, plastic strains, uh, and so on from a solid uh, from a, s a source part to a target part. So that could be, for instance, a, a forming part, and then these all these results are then mapped, transferred to the, the, the crash part using another uh, mesh there, and also the total thickness of the target part is adjusted. So, so the, the thickness is also kind of mapped from, from one to the other. And here you can see uh, that uh, the, the mapping process works. We can see a very good uh, match between the um, plastic strain distribution for the forming and the crash part here. Then another new feature is a the new moving temperature boundary condition and this is um, somehow the, the process they were aiming for is uh, the, the 3d printing um, maybe some of you have uh, uh, personally have a 3d printer at home or something with this um, the material is is heated up and 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 then and then um, due to the cooling uh, it, it uh, Go, um, it fits together and this is now also possible to simulate with LSDINA and therefore a new keyword called boundary temperature trajectory was implemented to do, to do that. So we have this temperature boundary condition, it is fixed or time varying, it is applied to nodes enclosed in a specif specified volume and then this volume is uh, a, you, you prescribe a, uh, a motion of this uh, and then you can s get these results and this can used can be used together with the um, mat cwm and the tight weld contact option to to bond the layers and to simulate this fused filament fabrication that's that's what a 3d printer uh, is, is doing and these are just some pictures showing uh, some some results there and that brings me directly to the next chapter uh, called ed additive manufacturing and this is also uh, about let's say printing uh, uh, products and uh, in in this area also a lot of development was was done at LSTC um, to to deal with these kinds of um, processes so you will see that in 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 some examples uh, on one of the next slides uh, how that works uh, first of all we have some new re remeshing algorithm implemented with dynamic local refinement following a heat source source um, mesh activation through adaptivity multi-body and multi-part remeshing then we have also need the the mapping uh, certainly meet, need a mapping between uh, between the process steps so um, all mechanical and thermal internal variables are transferred correctly 
uh, we have the deformation profile in this remapping scheme uh, taken care of. Multiple heat sources are uh, possible. You certainly need thermomechanical coupling to do so, to do these pr uh, processes uh, realistically. You, you can do a spring back analysis and so on. And all the related keywords uh, involving this new development are listed here. And I will show you on the next slide what they, what they do. Um, first of all, this new keyword called include AM blueprint um, here you can define the mesh of the final product, so uh, a layered hex mesh, as, as for instance shown here, that, so that's a so-called blueprint model. Then you define an adaptive box that uh, is uh, placed around the heat source for and, and, and is uh, where, where uh, adaptive remeshing and refinement should take place. You define a heat source, um, uh, a moving heat source, or, or multiple heat sources. And uh, finally, you have to define thermal convection and radiation uh, for, for the whole process. So this is the, the process is shown here uh, with the blueprint model, the mapping, the, the remashing, and also the, the uh, remapping of the internal variables. And on the next slide, we can see some examples of, uh, of that process. Um, Oh, I, I don't know why there's only, it's only showing one of them now. Okay, uh, some of them are missing here. Let's see if I can, okay, I don't know. Okay, um, at least we have one example shown here. Um, and it is, uh, you can see this, this heat source uh, moving and the, the, the material activa activation, activation, uh, the von Mises stress is building up, and from that you can uh, do, for instance, a spring bag analysis of your part. Okay, the other movies are not working at the moment, I see. However, let's go to uh, thermal uh, features, new features in uh, for the thermal solver, and let's start with uh, thermal boundary conditions. Thermal boundary conditions are um, uh, available for, for a long time, but now this is about the erosion of elements during some, some process, for instance, laser cutting or, or something like that. Then we have uh, elements eroding, and then the bo thermal boundary conditions should be applied to the new exposed, uh, newly exposed segments and, and so on. And this is taken care of now, as we can see in this uh, small example here, where we have elements eroded and the, as you can see, the thermal boundary conditions are working uh, even if the elements fail. So with all that and, and, the, and the keyword called boundary flux, it is now possible to simulate laser cutting. Um, but the definition of the moving heat source is, is pretty complicated if you use this, if you would use this keyword. And also the rotation of the laser uh, is a little hard to capture. Therefore, a new keyword called boundary flux trajectory was implemented to simplify the definition of your, uh, of your for instance, laser heat treatment or laser cutting process. So we need we uh, have the surface flux boundary condition um, following a prescribed path and also the orientation uh, of the laser. Um, we already saw that uh, newly exposed segments uh, uh, get propagated after e element erosion. Uh, surface heat density can be taken care of by either predefined distribution functions or user-defined functions. So that gives uh, uh, enough flexibility to, to uh, deal with these kind of applications. Also, the tilting of the heat source is accounted for. So that means the, 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 movement, the, the movement of the laser. And this is done by some, some beam element and the, uh, the um, movement of that and the heat density can, is automatically adapted 
And here we can see such a laser cutting process. And uh, so we have um, there for this process some um, some element erosion due to uh, temperature. Uh, so a failure criterion uh, based on temperature was used, and we also have a in this case a, a force we're acting here. Therefore, we get this uh, this behavior for the laser cutting process as shown here. Another new feature is the load thermal RSW for resistant resistance spot welding simulation. It's a simplification of thermal boundary condition uh, uh, as shown here. And so that means this is uh, aimed for a pure mechanical simulation without thermomechanical coupling. You just have a uh, structure only simulation, but you define a, a typical uh, temperature profile uh, which is usually observed in a weld nugget and that's just an external thermal load so we don't have any uh, heat transfer uh, into the surroundings and so on and and but it, this is a very uh, nice thing for early design phases and you can see in the, in this example how the um, weld nugget uh, builds up and and but you also see that there is no uh, heat transfer uh, or anything uh, like that then let's go to a pretty complex material model in Alastina uh, also for thermal applications called MAT254 or generalized phase change it's already quite complex uh, I would say but they're uh, still adding new features there like uh, the um, plastic strains that can now accelerate or uh, decelerate phase transformation speed. Um, a new parameter to define a cutoff temperature for thermal expansion. We have new additional history variables for post-processing. Uh, the annealing option was enhanced and also we have new phase transformation laws for this titanium alloy as shown shown here so it's it's a really um, really capable model um, but you really have to uh, go into the details but I think uh, with the uh, uh, colleagues from from uh, Dynamo uh, they can really help you uh, work with this new material model uh, just some more temperature dependent materials at the end of the thermal section. Um, some new features uh, there, for, for instance, for the MAT106. You can now define uh, up to eight user defined history variables uh, uh, referencing to some defined function. The MAT270 got also uh, this cut of temperature for thermal expansion and additional history variables for post-processing. MAT-277, here we have uh, an alternative uh, for the WLF shift function, which is the Arrhenius shift function. This model got curing-induced heating as well, uh, and the same is the case for MAT-278 for micromechanics, um, or, or uh, I think carbon fiber micromechanics. And also in interesting is that this model is now uh, got a complete re-implementation of the solid formulation, which didn't work well before. So that brings me to the uh, section on material models. Um, here, the first uh, new material model is the mat add in elasticity. And as you might know, uh, we already have other mat add material or mat add cards uh, keywords for instance for failure for uh, damage for thermal expansion and now this is to add inelasticity to uh, to the vast amount of uh, standard material models in elastina so um, so it's also based on a modular concept uh, to introduce inelastic effects in standard material models Currently, it includes plasticity, creep, and viscoelasticity models. 
for instance for instance you could add to the just to add to the meta elastic some uh, a creep law and a von Mises plasticity um, I think you could also use the MAT 188 uh, instead, but uh, so that's um, uh, that's a, a new possibility to add some missing feature to existing material models. So it's not intended to replace standard material models, but to rather complement with missing features. And uh, yeah, and and I think that's just the beginning. So I think we will see more models added. Uh, and and if you have any uh, needs, uh, please let us know, and we can uh, talk about that. Then the Gizmo damage model got a new feature for uh, shell elements because shell elements uh, show some or uh, show some. Uh, uh, difficulty in, in failure prediction um, when it comes to he um, sharp bending case uh, uh, situations and so on. And this can now be... Oh, sorry. Oh, come on. Uh, this can now be done with the... How oh, is this going away? <laughs> Excuse me. Um, okay, uh, this can now be done with this new option, uh, or there's this new option called LP2BI. That means loaded parameter to bending indicator. So, so everywhere where you can see, so the loaded parameter is usually necessary for solid elements, but for shells, this is now replaced by a bending indicator. And this bending indicator is this omega, which ranges from zero for pure membrane to one for pure bending um, behavior. And with that, uh, you can achieve a better failure prediction in, in, as I said, sharp bending situations. And so that uh, is somehow adopted from the already existing MAT 258. And in, in the paper where this is based on, there is this, this picture where you can see that a uh, this is the uh, plastic strain at failure for pure membrane and for pure bending. And we, ha we do a linear interpolation in, in between these two situations. And that should improve um, failure prediction uh, in, in certain cases. Another new keyword uh, that is related to, uh, to, to materials is the define element erosion. Um, this is about defining a, a rule to delete elements based on um, either the number of in-plane uh, or number of in-plane integration points and number of layers. So first of all, you would define how many in-plane integration points need to fail to indicate that a layer failed. And then with the next, the numfib, um, you define the number of layers which need to fail until the element is completely deleted in the end. So uh, you probably already know this from other material uh, models, but this is now a, a really general um, uh, approach that uh, can also be used and that's the that was the purpose to implement that uh, was composite layered shells where you have different material models within the layers. So ha you have different material models uh, to the thickness defined, and then um, uh, you can now really uh, define exactly how element de deletion should be uh, should be done based on this integration point failure. So this overrides uh, similar criteria defined within MET at erosion or individual MET definitions. Um, so, but it has to be, this new keyword has to be used together with material models that have failure options. Um, okay, then we have a new um, material model for shape memory alloys. There is already this MAT-30 since many years in Alastina, but now we have the new MAT-291, which is a micro-mechanics-inspired model that models the full uh, strain, stress, 
temperature space as, as shown here, for instance. So that's a pretty uh, complex material behavior that we have here. It was the new model is implemented for explicit and implicit. Um, it's for solids only at the moment. The shape memory effect is taken care of um, and it can be used together uh, in a thermal couple simulation with this MET thermal isotropic. And here we can see in an example how that works. For instance, we have some, okay, that's, uh, okay, that's around the end. So let's start here. So we get some deformation here on the right. You can see the deformation of the structure and the temperature is still constant. And now we increase the temperature and stop the deformation. And at some point, um, the, the temperature leads to a total, um, uh, uh, spring back to the original configuration, let's say, as can be seen in, in uh, shape memory alloys. Then the MAT58 is a very popular material model to model uh, composites. And what was all, always all, uh, missing was uh, that it could also be used with solid elements. And that is now possible with the, uh, the solid option. You have some new additional keywords uh, because we need more parameters to, to fill that uh, behavior. And then there's also the LCD fail now available for shells and solids, which allows direction dependent failure strains as shown here. So that is done w using a defined curve. <clears throat> So if, but if you're trying that with shell elements, we just learned that the R12 zero might have a problem. So if you want to try this feature, new feature with shell elements, so then you should ask us for a, uh, a newer version. Then we have the MET anisotropic hyperelastic, MET 295. It, this is a new modular material model for biological soft tissues or re re fiber reinforced elastomers. And it's a modular approach where you can uh, have nearly incompressible uh, and compressible models, rotational non-symmetric fiber dispersion. And this can also be coupled with electro, with the electromagnetic solver and the mechanical solver uh, to, to uh, do muscle activation, for instance. And this is all based on a paper by uh, Gasser at at uh, Al, and um, uh, here we can just see uh, how how it works uh, correctly, as 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 shown in this uh, publication. We have a new uh, material called discrete beam point contact. Um, this is, I think, uh, was implemented by people from Arab, and they are always interested in civil engineering projects project. So, for instance, uh, earthquake simulations of buildings and so on, and they uh, and civil engineers are really uh, using uh, beam elements a lot. And this new material model gives a very high flexibility to, to um, deal with situations like this, um, where you have a really uh, complicated or not complicated, but uh, precise uh, representation of contact between beams and, and, and shell edges and so on. So it's not totally a material model, but also some kind of a contact uh, model. Another uh, material model for beams, also for uh, seismic analysis of buildings is the MAT 209. It's suitable for steel or reinforced concrete. Uh, you can define plastic hinges at both ends of the beam. Uh, you get nonlinear uh, behavior for axial and shear loading. Also uh, mixed mode as seen in this yield surface here. You have uh, really a, lo uh, a vast amount of uh, uh, possibilities to define hardening, softening, damage options, and so on. You can see hysteresis and so on. And that was successfully used to uh, in, in this um, earthquake simulation of a of this building, as shown here with this Alice Dyna model. 
Uh, more material model enhancements just listed here. Um, there are some new options for the matte nonlinear plastic discrete beam, matte 68, where you can now define nonlinear elastic uh, stiffnesses. Then this is pretty a uh, nice thing I think for uh, forming applications uh, the MAT 133 the Bala Yield 2000 is now available for solid elements and uh, this uh, 3D extension uh, is based on on this on this paper here and uh, yeah it should satisfy the growing interest it, interest in accurate metal forming with solid elements um, the um, then we have the matte tailored properties, it's, uh, or the matte 251. Uh, this is now also available for solid elements. Before it was only for shells. Uh, this material model, uh, there you can define the yield stress as a function of strain and, and strain rate. So that's like MAT24. But here, in addition, uh, you can define this yield stress as a function of also of uh, arbitrary history variables. So that could be uh, um, hardness or porosity or whatever. So uh, this is also, I think, a very interesting material model for applications such as bake hardening, casting parts, and so on. And finally, we have this uh, material model for composites, uh, laminated fractured Daimler Camenio. And here we also have new options. For instance, the transverse shear damage was added. Uh, similar to the MAT54. And also there is a new flag to control the in integration point failure based on in-plane shear. Okay, so um, that brings me to the isogeometric analysis part of the presentation. Um, what uh, new uh, uh, developments do we have in the area of IGA? One of the mo most important aspects of um, isogeometric uh, element ana final element analysis is the, the trimming. And here we have this keyword element shell nerves patch trimmed. And, and these trimmed uh, patches are really uh, uh, one of the key uh, features of, of, the, of the analysis. And uh, because in, in a typical CAD file, uh, the surfaces are made up from several different patches and the uh, underlying geome geometry description usually goes beyond the actual visible, visible surface. So it's kind of complicated and, and it means that a typical patch is defined by its underlying surface description and a so-called trimming loop. And uh, this this is all um, uh, for for CAD for the representation for the for the display of the surfaces. This is maybe maybe uh, not that complicated, but if you really want to do a mechanical coupling of these trim patches, um, this is was quite some challenge to implement that uh, in a in a robust manner in Elastina, and there was the choice between. Uh, implementing this continuity at interfaces in a, in a strong uh, form or in a in a weak form and um, so that is for the displacement and, and the rotations and as I said a lot of effort was put into that to improve this uh, and and to add bug fixes and so on and that uh, should now really work quite well as we will see on the next slides also, uh, support for a rotation-free thin shell formulation was added. So let's take a look at some results. Um, so this is uh, trimmed patches. So this is shells with, with rotational degrees of freedom. Here we can see an untrimmed. So this is the reference, let's say. And here we have two trimmed parts. Here we have three trimmed parts. And we can see that the continuity between the patches works very well. So we get all uh, consistent results, matching results between these three different uh, discretizations, let's say. Then let's go to the new uh, shells without, without rotational degrees of freedom. For that, 
um, we without uh, some some rotational constraints we would get uh, these kings in the deformation and also in the results we, we see these um, discontinuities so it was necessary to add these rotational constraints to to uh, reach continuity so on the right hand side we see the same result as on the slides before um, with this smooth uh, deformation and 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 stress distribution. Um, here a list of some more new enhancements for the IGA. There is um, a uh, defined spot weld rupture keyword that now works with isogeometric uh, shell elements. The element erosion, for instance, by with the gizmo model is now available for shells and solids, also important. Um, implicit contact is now supported via interpolation elements. So you could use the IGA now uh, in informing processes up to, up to the end uh, where you have the implicit springback. Thickness change options are now supported. Um, conventional mass scaling is uh, available for the IGA solids. Material models 54 and 224 are now supported with the IGA shells. And finally, the laminated shell theory is now also supported for IGA shells. So that's all to, to bring the isogeometric analysis to a point where it can really uh, be uh, an alternative to the current finite ele element uh, analysis as you uh, probably use today. Then some uh, other general new features. Um, let's go through that. Um, there is a new cylindrical joint uh, with play. So you can now define uh, cylindrical joint stiffness uh, for modeling play of actual bearings. Um, so uh, this is the keyword uh, related to that. The geometry is perfectly representative represented with that. Um, so it's an analytical uh, description of the ge geometry. And you have a friction model, an actual limit. So this is a picture from the current manual. So uh, and, and on the right, you can see a, um, a short movie of that behavior. Then for bold pre-stressing, um, we have a new option on initial stress section. Um, with this I-stiff parameter. Uh, the thing with uh, very long bolts, usually you define a... So this is a, bo a bolt modeled with solid elements and you have uh, one row of solid elements and, and the initial stress section goes through that um, row of elements. But if the bolt is pretty long, then that could lead, and, and the pre-stressing is all done in this element row. And that could lead to uh, a, a, a um, shrinking of this element row to a point where it gets extremely small, uh, which is bad for uh, time step, or maybe it's, it's even uh, ending your simulation. And this is now... Uh, there is now a possibility to distribute this um, uh, pre-stressing al along the shank of the bolt. Uh, so it's not just one row of elements, but this is now distributed. And it really enhances the stability uh, through this arti artificial stiffness. So this is for, yeah, this is for long bolts. Um, and, and if you have situations like that, you, you should try this new option. Then we have a new keyword set part tree where you can define a branch in a tree structure already in your input um, and with this keyword you can model a hierarchical tree structure of your model and also there are new options uh, branch, D branch uh, that can be used in, in the set node general and the set segment general keywords. So it gives them um, uh, this uh, tree structure. 
Then another uh, option, a new opt or uh, an, an enhancement of an option that is already available uh, for a long time. This is the erode parameter on control time step, which was uh, available previously uh, for solids and, and uh, thick shells. And now this is extended to also work for beams and shells. So, uh, and, and you should take a look at the manual, how you do that. Uh, that's shown here with all these ones and zeros. And below there is an example uh, just showing that it now works for all these kinds of different element types. So at one point we, get, we see the erosion of the elements. Then star case. Um, if you're doing a multi-case analysis or multi-step analysis, you may might, might already know the star case. Uh, so that's available for a long time already. Um, but now there's a, a, an option uh, to, uh, to run only a subset of these cases that you defined in the input deck. So this is done by uh, defining or de specifying case ID numbers on the execution line. So on the execution line, you do not only write case, but for instance, case equal one comma three, and then the simulation would only run cases one and th three uh, after each other. So just a, a, an example here, how that could look like. Then we have uh, the a new um, possibility to do co-simulation with other software and for that we have um, a, a, th a functional mock-up interface implemented now and the uh, corresponding new keywords are the cosim star cosim uh, keywords fmi control fmi interface and that adds the capability to remotely uh, co-simulate with other software uh, so also supporting the fmi standard and for that, the TCP IP communication uh, is used between these solvers. And um, so each software contributes their solution um, uh, results to a coupled multi-physics problem using uh, specified communication time steps. So for instance, in, in this example, the LS Dyna sends some um, sensor data, for instance, accelerations to a controller in another software and in that software at some point uh, it, it, it determines that the sensor should get active and then the airbag is fired uh, in LS Dyna. So that's just a very <laughs> simple uh, model how that could work. So we have this uh, functional mock-up unit in the other software here and so we, these could be work together at the same time. We have a new keyword called initial history node. Um, that's um, similar to initial stress shell, initial stress solid, um, but it's not using uh, element sets, but node sets. And it's only, f or it's especially for the Im initialization of history variables. And uh, it's available for shells uh, and and solids. If, if I, I at least for shells, it should be in the R twelve zero. Maybe not yet uh, the other ones. Uh, in R, maybe you need an R twelve beta version for that. Um, then uh, what we do is that the nodal values are interpolated because these history variables at the nodes have to be transferred to the integration points where they really uh, live. And this is done by uh, in, uh, uh, this interpolation. And in contrast to the initial stress shell, the, uh, you can here uh, initialize individual history variables. So um, not, not, you, you don't have to uh, put all the zeros there and only define one and, and this and that. Uh, history variable, but uh, here you can really specify the history variable number and its value. So it's a pretty compact uh, way to initialize history variables. So you would define a node set, for instance, 
And uh, here in this case, history variable number six gets a value of one for these nodes. So that in, in the end, it means these shell elements get a one. Then we have an interpolation between one and zero. So we have one point, uh, 0 0.5 and the rest stays at zero. And finally, some uh, miscellaneous uh, options. There is, for instance, this new option TET13V on control solid. Um, this is to choose between the efficient, the so a so-called efficient and the more accurate version of the TET type 13 implementation. You might know that TET type 13 is a, uh, a, a, a four node tetrahedron with pressure averaging to, uh, to get rid of volumetric locking. And I, I, I'm listing this here because the, the, the non-default, uh, if you would, get, would like to get the previous behavior pre previous to R12, you have to define this non-default here. Then we have a new option for perturbation node. Sorry. How's this? Um, then we have a new option for perturbation node. Uh, we, there you have the possibility to define some random value perturbation for the uh, for the nodes to to get some something like that for instance for a robustness analysis or something like that uh, I mean this is a magnific magnified uh, uh, representation of uh, nodal um, deformations initially. Then on define transformation, there are two new options um, uh, for uh, defo uh, transformation of 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 a mall, uh, of a mesh. Uh, the first is uh, a translation, where you, uh, which is given by two nodes and the distance, and a rotation. And the second one is a rotation given by three nodes and an angle. And finally. Uh, the defined pressure tube is now supporting the MPP decomposition, uh, which was not the case before. Let's go to the last section uh, where I will briefly show you uh, the, f the, the remaining topics, uh, which is first is fatigue and frequency domain. Um, for the fatigue, so there's a lot of development going on. I, I'm only showing some of that here. Uh, so for the fatigue, we have uh, the possibility to deal with uh, removed failed elements. Uh, we can run a multi-actual fatigue analysis. We can run multiple load steps um, and also a time domain fatigue analysis based on D3 plot. Um, as shown on in this in this movie, and also we have several enhancements in the area of the frequency domain. You can define uh, an option called local for do a frequency domain analysis only only on on parts of the model, not the whole model, but only a part of it, and some further options are listed here. Then in the um, let's say, um, uh, uh, methods like SPG and XFAM, we also uh, have some enhancements. For instance, S SPG, that stands for smooth, part smooth Particle uh, Galerkin. So it's kind of a mesh-free method. Uh, what was enhanced there, the user input is simplified. More material model laws are now supported. Uh, for instance, the um, MAT uh, 199 as shown here, and so on. Also, SPG bond failure criteria were added. So that means we can now, you can do, uh, you can now use uh, failure criteria from MAT24 or the gizmo or the add erosion uh, with together with the SPG method. In S XFAM, uh, this now also supports the gizmo damage model. Seems to be quite popular. Um, 
then uh, we have a new keyword boundary pre-crack to adjust the location of pre-crack uh, to avoid passing through nodal points and that's just an example uh, how results could look like with the XFEM analysis. Also in the area of ALE and SALE, which is structured ALE, we have a new keyword for uh, called ALE mesh interface. Uh, where you get material interfaces with triangular shells. Uh, ALE simulation results are output as um, FEM TET meshed bodies. Then we have the new keyword ALE mapping to map data during a run. So uh, what is what was already available was the initial ALE or uh, lag mapping. Um, and this is now also possible to do during a run and uh, you can use it to m map results from uh, shells to solids, uh, solids, to solids to solids and so on. And further enhancements for the structured ALE, one of them is for instance the uh, possibility to model weakly incompressible water uh, by supporting the equation of state called um, Mernigan or I don't know how to pronounce that correctly and uh, then um, we have uh, some more new options for the structured ALE just uh, one of them is shown here that brings me to the SPH or in this case the implicit incompressible SPH method because um, people wanted to run simulations that last a very long time like many seconds like we will now see in this uh in this movie um uh, where we have a automotive water wading simulation that takes several seconds and this is not not efficiently possible with explicit sph so uh and this implicit uh, uh approach was implemented allowing for larger time step sizes and in addition they used this MPP decomposition redeem decomposition that's also a new development to improve uh, MPP load balancing when uh, a moving box defines active region of uh, SPH particles and also dead uh, SPH particles are removed at each re redecomposition step and so that's quite impressive what they can do now uh, so that's as i said lasting for i think eight nine ten seconds uh, to do a water wading simulation with this new method also in the area of icfd a lot of new enhancements uh, improvements new features uh, only showing you a a little bit of that here um, that's for instance the ICFD boundary periodic keyword uh, that allows to uh, do uh, periodic uh, and sliding mesh boundary conditions as we will see in this movie now and this is to avoid mesh distortions when studying rotation rotating machinery so that's uh, that's a blood pump okay that looks like a fluid in the blood pump but if we get this movie now, then you can see this uh, this uh, sliding mesh boundary method, and, and uh, that's uh, a new development in R12. Also, we have new wave generation options. Um, there, we already had some uh, wave uh, generation options, but now, in, in addition, we have a fifth order Stokes waves, solitary waves, irregular waves and so on and as I said there are many other new functionalities for the CFD but that's not, there is not enough time today to, to talk about all of that if you're interested in that you, you should check out the papers from the last uh, virtual conference uh, that took place this year uh, I think on this brings me to the last topic, I think, which is the electromagnetic solver and, and, uh, and batteries. We have updates for this EM solver. 
where they added mortar uh, contact types to improve the accuracy in, in resistance spot weld uh, welding. Uh, they they support eroding conductors. They added a coupling with the ICFD solver. So in this uh, animation, you just see this uh, resistance spot welding um, process. Then they implemented electrochemistry thermomechanical coupling. Um, so very, very uh, multi-phase uh, uh, coupling. And uh, with a new thermal and mechanical coupling with an electrochemical uh, lithium ion battery model. And then to do battery modeling, they have four different uh, uh, possibilities to do that uh, depending on the scale they, they have the they have you can model them with solids with thick shells there is a macro approach and a meshless approach uh, and that just showing here a sphere impacting a 10 cells module and you can see the current density the temperature so everything coupled together deformations uh, shortcuts and so on so that's really promising to do uh, crash analysis with batteries um, and finally we added a uh, possibility to deal with state of charge expansion uh, with this new keyword MedAd SOC expansion okay so that brings me to the end of this webinar um, to conclude uh, you saw that this new release R12.0 contains a variety of new features I didn't show all of them, but I hope uh, it's it's uh, it's already a, a, a lot. And and if you're interested in a really comprehensive list of all enhancements and code corrections, you can go to our website here, uh, where you get the full list. Then we have the R12 keywords manual also available for download uh, on our website, and. As I already said, for the fluid uh, solver, you can find more information in, in papers from this uh, conference, uh, from, from the virtual conference that took uh, place this year. And yeah, that's uh, all I have to uh, say today. I hope you, uh, I hope it wasn't too much and you enjoyed. Uh, seeing all the new possibilities with Alastina and uh, with that I would like to thank you for your attention and wish you a nice week.